What's up guys, this is Mike with ECS Tuning and today's topic of discussion is wheel spacers. I'm going to show you how to pick the right size, answer some frequently asked questions, and show you some common applications. We offer our wheel spacers in many different sizes to allow you to get that perfect wheel fitment. Spacers can be used for many different reasons. They can add that extra clearance between wheels and custom brake and suspension components, widen your vehicle's track width, which would improve cornering stability, and move stock wheels closer to the fender line, improving their look and giving the car a more aggressive style and stance. Before choosing the correct spacer thickness, you need to know the clearance between your wheel and your fender wall. If you've recently installed new suspension components, particularly springs, it's important to allow one week for them to fully settle before taking your measurements. With the car on the ground and the suspension fully settled, measure the distance between the inner fender lip and the edge of the rim or tire sidewall at the point of least clearance. The point of least clearance is usually near the top of the fender. For OEM suspension and wheels, or for a less aggressive fitment, you can use a straight edge and place it along the widest part of the tire. Then, using a tape measure or caliper, measure from the inside lip of the fender well to the inside of the straight edge. This distance is the maximum available clearance. Choose a spacer that's slightly thinner than this measurement to ensure clearance even under full suspension compression. For our purposes, we chose to run the biggest spacer allowed by our measurements. Notice the difference it's made to this OEM setup. For a more aggressive wheel and tire fitment, it's sometimes possible to run a thicker spacer to get the look you want. But, calculating the available clearance is somewhat difficult. How wide you can go is dependent on your vehicle, your wheel and tire combo, and how stiff your suspension is. Running stretched tires or stiffer suspension can allow for a wider track width without fender to tire contact. To safely run thicker spacers, you'll need to estimate how much your suspension will compress under maximum vehicle load. This will depend on how you use your vehicle, so use common sense. With the car at loaded ride height, measure the horizontal distance between the fender and the nearest point on the tire. This distance is the maximum available clearance. Choose a spacer slightly thinner than this measurement. You also need to check the clearance on the front of your car, because in some cases, you'll need a different size spacer for the front than you do for the rear. Remember, these dimensions are different for every vehicle, so actual measurements are a must. Think about how you use your car before you decide how much clearance you need or how aggressive you want to get. One thing this may not work for all loads and driving conditions, so it's important to leave a little room for suspension compression. Once you've selected your spacers, you need to determine if you need longer wheel bolts. OEM bolts are long enough to safely secure your factory wheel to the hub. When installing wheel spacers, you increase the distance between the hub and the wheel bolt seats, and the OE bolts will be too short to safely secure the wheel. This is a safety issue and must be taken seriously. Wheel bolts are measured from the base of the seat to the end of the bolt. Add the length of your stock wheel bolt to the thickness of your spacer to determine the required length of bolt. If the exact length bolt is not available, Round up to the next available size within 5 millimeters to ensure adequate thread penetration, but not to use a bolt that's too long as it can interfere with suspension or brake components behind the hub. Also, when buying new bolts, be sure you select the correct wheel bolt type for the bolt seat used in your wheel, either conical or ball seat. Another thing to consider is wheel bore. This is the hole in the center of the wheel whose diameter matches the extension on the hub. What this does is center your wheel onto the hub to ensure smooth, vibration-free driving. While thinner spacers don't have a hub extension, they're thin enough to allow the wheels to sit on the OEM hub. Thicker spacers have a lip to mimic the OEM hub, allowing your wheel to sit on it and be hub-centric. Be sure to always use a high-quality hub-centric spacer. Before installing your spacer, hub preparation is very important. Accumulation of rust and scale on the hub extension or rotor face itself can prevent your wheel and spacer from seating correctly. This can lead to improper tightening of bolts, 
wheel runoff, and vibrations. Remove heavy rust deposits from the hub mounting face and centering lip with a wire brush or synthetic fiber disc. Also, make sure your wheel's clean. Often, rust is deposited from the hub face to the wheel mounting flange, potentially causing the same issue. Wipe away any loose scale and wash the inside of the wheel. Don't use an abrasive to clean the soft wheel material. Then, apply a thin film of grease or anti-seize to the wheel and hub mating surfaces. Inspect the threaded holes in the hub, then loop the lug bolts with a quality anti-seize compound and torque them to specification. Spacers up to 10 millimeters don't have a hub extension. The center hole in these spacers are chamfered to fit against the tapered neck of the original hub. Install these spacers with the bore taper facing towards the hub. With the wheels and spacers installed, it's time for a final test. Make sure the wheels do not contact the fender as they're turned, and that there's some additional clearance to compensate for body roll and suspension compression when cornering. On vehicles with adjustable spring perches, it may be necessary to increase ride height to provide additional steering clearance. Selecting that perfect wheel spacer is going to take some measurements and trial and error adjustments to get that perfect fit. We hope our tips have made it easier for you to select what's best for your car. I'm Mike with ECS Tuning, and I'll see you next time. Remember, ECS Tuning has a complete selection of spacers and wheel bolts for European applications, plus a large inventory of wheels and suspension upgrade components to get the look you want.